Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're live at EMC World, Silicon Angle's continuous coverage, wall-to-wall -wall coverage of EMC World. We're here with Mike Capellas, who's the CEO of VCE. Mike, welcome back to theCUBE. Nice I don't know if, to be here. I don't know if you remember, but our very first CUBE was two years ago in Boston at EMC World, and uh, you came on with Joe Tucci. We had a great conversation. My, my co-host asked Joe if storage was sexy, and Joe didn't really think so, but, uh, <laughs> so welcome back. You know, I actually remember that. Uh, we were telling the story about how I ended up with this as I was minding my own business and ran Joe into a baseball game. And so, somewhere between one beer and one hot dog, I ended up, you know, uh, <laughs> at VCE. Working yeah. with him at VCE. <laughs> yeah, so we're also here with Stu Miniman, who uh, follows converged infrastructure for us. So, so Michael, we were, I was just in your session upstairs with the, uh, with the analysts. I thought it was good. I got some good questions out of them. You know, analysts sometimes ask good questions, sometimes not. Absolutely. And, uh, but um, I, I, I thought your, your you know, brief, History lesson was good. You know, you talk about VCE. It came out in 2009. And what I always liked about listening to you talk about this is you have a practitioner's perspective. Yeah. You know, you're not just the marketing, you know, CEO talking points. Talk a little bit about. Um, take us back to the vision that you guys had with VCE and why that's so important from a practitioner's perspective. Yeah. So I mean, the um, so VCE was actually formed. The, those of you who don't know, it is it was a venture that was formed between EMC Cisco with participation by uh, Intel and VMware. And you know, people ask how it you know, sort of originated. Well, it actually goes back a long time. If, if, and I have two parallels that you make. If you think about the world of networking, you know, we were around networking and we had fixed networks and data networks and point to point and OC whatevers. And you know, the IP networks came along, you said, I'm going to write one place and I don't have to know or care where the physical layer is underneath it. And that spawned, oh, probably 10 years of extremely rapid you know, technological advancement. Well, we were, you know, between both companies, between both Cisco and EMC, we said, well, we know that there will be a convergence of where the network starts and compute ends. You know, what's a blade, what's a switch, how storage fits in, and then of course, EMC uh, through Joe, you know, getting together with VMware and how virtualization, and so when you looked at the pieces you had, you know, compute, networking, the interconnect, storage, virtualization, the connect, and we said, we can develop an alternate model which is very quick, not constrained by the things normal big companies, and be able to create really the next, literally, x86 class mainframe by, by using the best of capabilities, and everybody's familiar with big mergers, I might know a little bit about that. Uh, and so it was an alternate way to do fast innovation using the best technology components under the understanding, just like networks, there would be convergence. Yeah, so um, I, I didn't realize, I guess I, I thought about what you just said about the x86 mainframe. You guys actually copied IBM on that, on that front. <laughs> you know, not with the x86 mainframe, but the mainframe, right? So in a way, you were trying to conceive of this you know, software mainframe, as Maritz calls it, or the x86-based mainframe. Now I wanted to follow up on that. So 2009, you announced VBOC. IBM came out, uh, I guess it was last month, yep. with, with you know, three years later, uh, with their con, you know, converged system, the integrated systems, pure systems. Um, so, you know, you guys, that's a three year time to market advantage yep. that you have. Now, there are certain things about IBM's system that I like, you know, codifying all that knowledge. Now, I'm trying to figure out how much of that is, is real, how much of that is good marketing. Can the industry actually take those learnings, codify it, and embed it into systems so that those systems are intelligent in a way that can align to applications and workloads? Yeah, I, I, I think you've actually hit on the two most important things. Everybody talks about the different offerings in the marketplace, you know, everybody's X converged, somebody's reference architecture. What really defines this is you really do have to look at applications and workloads. And it, the answer is, well, what do you use? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, so if you take what IBM has done, you know, and by the way, I'm incredibly respectful of them. All right, they've been around a long time, and you know, been, you know, obviously their reputation speaks for themselves. What they were trying to say is, we have an understanding of the software stack that allows you to be able to take and de deploy applications in a very robust way, ensuring all the things you need from 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 mainframe class, you know, reliability, robustness. They then took and they put their cloudburst layer on the top of the say, now we'll add some feature function here to give it the you know the kind of things you need for services in a cloud layer. Uh, the, the, the ability to do dynamic portals to be able to do uh, monitoring and metering and all that stuff. And so, you know, I mean, one thing I like about what IBM does is basically when IBM jumps into the fray, they have validated the market and a high tide floats all ships. So this does say they will approach it from uh, their stack, which they're knowledgeable, and they certainly understand the applications world. 
will approach it from a view of saying, we have taken the absolute best in class components. You know, Cisco with their you know, innovation and lead in, in networking down through the fabric and in, in, into the Intel blades, storage, virtualization, and we will approach from both sides saying, this is a new way to deploy infrastructure as you need it where you don't have to know or care where that physical layer is, then let the applications come and determine what the workload is depending on what the need is. Yeah, so the validation point is, is key and now, when EMC quietly put in its 10K, the numbers uh, uh, that they had to report because it was getting so measurable, Stu and I sort of squinted through those and we tried to reverse engineer them and build a little yeah. VCE model. Um, for the purpose of saying, all right, well how big is this thing really? And it's, it's quite large. Uh, now, uh -huh. of course, the other point is you guys are investing a lot of money into it. Um, and so, you know, from a, if you looked at it from a VC standpoint, wow, this is really an expensive endeavor. And so what we did is we said, well, let's look at the market. Why, why are people doing this? The market's absolutely enormous. We yep. quantified it at $400 billion TAM yep. because, it, because it's everything. It's compute, it's storage, it's, 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 it's networking, and it's the services and software around it. You made a point that the services you know, in, in concept should decline. Correct. But still, we're talking about an enormous market. And, and it's almost like government's investing in, in things. You, you, a little tiny startup can't do this, you know? Well, it, so first place, uh, it, this gives me an opportunity to set the record straight on one thing. And God knows the audience doesn't want an accounting class, but I'm going to offer one anyway. <laughs> the way the business model works is, when we sell a V-Block, and this is fully disclosed in all financials, is EMC picks up the revenue and the margin on their products, Cisco picks up the revenue margin on their products, and what is left is reported is only the expense. And as Joe Tucci says, the bigger the expense get, the more successful we are. So people sometimes look and say, well, well that is actually the profit, it's not. The profit's already been taken. Right. And internally, VCE has, like any normal company, a P&L based on a standalone. So don't confuse the reported expense number from the profitability. Yeah, and and we didn't, we, that's what I say. Yeah. We tried to do yeah. Now back because, to the relevant because, point. Because, because, <laughs> because, because, but that's an important point, because what you're saying is that, that, that Brian Gallagher's P&L takes profit from that, and Rich Napolitano's you know, P&L takes profit. We had Rich on earlier, he's yeah. saying, wow, I love V-Block, I'm making, it's a big chunk of my business. So, yeah. so that's, we get that, and okay. that's, uh, that's a good thing. All right, so anyway, continue, I'm sorry. So the point you were making is how big is the market? Yeah. Well, the, the question you want to ask is, at what point and at what adoption level do you have where converged infrastructure starts to represent a relative percentage of the market? And so what we're already starting to see is you start to see where somebody will make a decision to actually deploy applications this way, and that decision will actually sort of define what they do in switching for the entire data center, uh, server for the entire center, and compute. So, I mean, we look at the compounded growth rates. One of the reasons, you know, I'm a kind of a common sense guy, is w why is that the case? Well, the value proposition says, I can deploy it, I don't have to do any release management, don't have to do any configuration management. I can actually start to think about just deploying infrastructure which is really the cloud model, when I need it, as I need it. Um, the V-Block has been optimized so that it is in perfect balance relevant to most application loads. So, you know, when you try to do it on your own, you're always over by the storage, under by the compute, and you never get it. So, the reason why it continue to grow is, customers are saying, the goal here is the fastest possible deployment of applications, the most flexibility without having to know or care where the infrastructure is, and it's a compelling common sense value problem. Mm -hmm. so, so, Go ahead, Steve. So um, we, we talked about the different components that make up the converged infrastructure, yep. where there, there's really been an opportunity in the market is from the systems management, rather yep. than individual product management, and the convergence should change the operating models. So uh, can you talk a little bit as to you know, what VCE sees as their role there, and where, where are you driving things? Yeah, so what is really interesting is you, you have to think about things differently when you start assuming virtualization is the way you deploy. In a traditional style world in systems management, it said, I have an application and I have a system, and the way Dennis said it operate is I have clusters. I have a mainframe cluster over here that runs some financial applications. I got a, a Windows world over here that runs some web serving. I've got a Unix world over here that does something. And so we built system management to say I have a one-to-one -one relationship between the application and the system. Throw a thousand VMs in, it doesn't know anymore. And so we have actually taken a very different look at systems management by saying, I have at the element level, or defined as the compute engine, the, the network level, and the, and the storage level, I have all the information about the components. Let me just extract and identify those components. I'll pass that information up 
to the, to the virtualization engine which says, now what do I need? I need to know which resources deploy, I need to know how to do it, I need to be able to address what pools I want to use. So we, don't, we took an opposite world. Instead of looking down here going up, we said, let's look at system management from what does the virtualization layer do, go down, automatically discover and literally strip out layers that you don't need anymore. And so the answer to the question is, is well, what do you do for systems management is, we inherently take advantage of all the capability that's already there and only add those things to the virtualization that it needs to do resource management. It's a very different view. I thought um, Andrew Reichman from Forrester asked a really good question. Uh, he didn't close it right, but I, 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 I can say that. It's easy for me to say, but he, I, I thought his question was one of the better ones I heard. So I'm going I'm to re-ask it here and maybe we can talk about it. He said, you know, you guys talk about best of breed. Yep. And, and he said that, and I buy that, EMC, storage, and, and, uh, um, um, and Cisco, and networking. Cisco networking. But he said the Cisco compute piece is somewhat speculative, yep. is the way he said it. And then he asked, this is where he blew it, he said, is that holding you back? And you were very nice, you could have said, we're crushing it, what do you mean is it holding us back? So that was the wrong close. But what I thought was, could it potentially be a barrier down the road? It, I wonder if you could address that. So, the way we answer that question yep. is that First place is, let's, let's remember the way we think about this, and we do think about it differently. We don't think about it a, as just a blade or a processor. What UCS is, is you, take, you start with very dense, high performance IP switching, you put a fabric into it that allows you to go down to the compute engine, and you actually have a zero latency uh, configuration between network and compute. Um, at that point, you know, we certainly can adapt through Intel and our partnerships, you know, Intel technology adoption at the fastest possible rate. To that, we embed storage and we natural virtualize. The question isn't, you know, just is it, do you have a better, faster blade, because Intel basically is, is providing uh, the core. We are actually delivering something very different. It is the integration of the switch with the fabric, with the compute, to deliver an integrated approach, which dramatically changes all the value proposition. So, you know, somebody, somebody else got a different question. If you only want to run a very low end server, it's a single application, it's probably not the thing. If you want to manage applications and actually create compute as a utility, then it's a very and different And then question. the other thing you said is you're, you're not going to do some of the things that, some of the workloads and applications that VBlock's going into, you're just not going to do them on a reference architecture. Well, it, it, again, I always like to differentiate the market. A reference architecture, and we're fine with that, you know, I, I, you know uh, Cisco EMC is supporting those, is a very different thing than a system that's integrated. If you want to go out, one of the analogies I mean, would you ever build a mainframe on the shop floor and then try to run mission critical applications? Probably not. Would you take some storage and, and, and some switches and a server and build it on the floor and be able to run you know, a Windows, uh, you know, uh, maybe you want to run some Exchange or SharePoint. So there's a set of class of applications or even some customers who have their own IP they want to apply that will be for some class of application. VBlock is actually something very different. It's an integrated system that you can run mixed workloads, and it is, in fact, a much higher abstraction. And you know, which one you run where? Well, it depends what your applications are. We're, you know, if you want us to go provide a VBlock simply to run Exchange a little faster, you know, you're probably going to buy something else. So I'm wondering if you could address the service provider market, because we yeah. see, uh, you know, rather than most enterprises have multiple applications, service providers very much a scale-out architecture, but I understand you guys have been doing pretty well there, yeah. so maybe you can address uh, how that fits together. Well, depending on what class of service provider you look at, because you have SIs and so on, but let's just use what would be the traditional. If you're a service provider and you've been running a network, what is it that you used to do? Well, you manage the network, you put IP on top of that, and what you sold to your value, your customers, you don't have to know or care where the network is, I'll do billing for you, I'll do quality of service, I'll be able to differentiate SLAs. So the first thing I said, well, if I'm there, could I now start to sell other higher level forms of compute? Drop in a V-block. V-block goes in, all the, you can now sell the entire infrastructure as a service, not only with compute networking and storage at that level, but the actual network underneath it. You have your tools for to differentiate quality of service, I got that, I can bill it. So it's a natural, and then you can consume it as you need it. If you need more, you add another V-block. So it's a natural environment for the service providers. And by the way, as you know, these are very technically bright people who are used to running things at enormous scale. And, and I want to come back to this. So service providers, you think service providers, you think of you know, large infrastructure and, yep. and, and repeatable. So I want to come back to the reference architecture discussion because I personally think that the ref, reference architecture, you guys doing a reference architecture would dilute a core value proposition, in, in my opinion. Yep. At the same time, the channel's clamoring 
yeah. for a reference. And, and reference architecture is a, a bigger business because you can define it pretty much any yeah. way you want. My question is, um, are you going to do a va baby V block? And uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, we agree. So he, the way we sort of think about this, and one of the things we're particularly proud of is um, you know, particularly at some stage of, of your evolution, you want to make sure you have a great customer experience, and that's something we're particularly proud of. So what we said, our first foray into that was, we have a bunch of large customers who actually want to do a, a remote office deployment. So we said, aha, you know, so we have been developing a product, which is a lower end product, which is for remote distribution to be used with our bigger engines. They're called 300, 700, but whatever they're called. That's step one. What we'll learn from that are the characteristics of what you now need to do to build a V-Block, which is standalone, which has different requirements for manageability and some other things. We have been working with our channel partners to define what are those characteristics. So the natural evolution, by the way, of all technologies. You know, you come in early, you get enterprise customers to validate it, you then start to go to the channel, you then val you validate that, you develop a remote office integrated system, from that you develop a more standalone product, you take that product, through the channel and, and offer it as a standalone. So this is classic evolution, step by step. We will be there. Um, we're not going to pre-announce the product, but we are in active discussions with partners on requirements for a standalone product in that market. The second reason, to be honest with you, is we've actually had you know, so much volume and scale, you know, we, we, yeah. so, demand yeah. hasn't been a problem so far. That's so I, I wonder if you could speak a little bit more to the channel. There were a, a little bit of bumps in the road, I'd say, kind yeah. of the first 12 to 18 months. I agree uh, And uh, kind of with the whole Acadia model got sorted out, yeah. the VCE. Um, it, I think signals we've gotten are things are better, but you know, th there's a, there's a big fight in the channel for, uh, you know, who's go who's going to own that piece. Well, so when we started the model, it was a service model, and I mean, I'll, I have to admit, I kind of had a point of view on that. Is you know, having a service model is competition with the channel. All right, so okay, we're not going to do that, guys. We're out of business. So I was bumping the road. Number. Second bump in the road is we had a reference architecture for a very complex product, and you know, what is the classic step of channel deployment? You have to mature the model, you have to mature the product, it has to be repeatable, you have to have tools. And so as we came up that curve, I mean it is classic. A very complex product in early stages is not terribly productive for the channel. A mature product with services value added content with tools is pretty good. So, you know, we came up and you know, I mean, we got a little bit of positioning by different parties. We're also doing a little bit better of being much more consistent in this is what we're going to do with not, you noticed how clear I was. This is what we're going to do on the commercial product. It's right. extremely clear. So we had some bumps in the road. Um, part of it was just maturation. And I do think right now we are recruiting partners. We're very clear. We're not going to compete by offering services uh, at the end product, you know, for an SP. We're not going to offer software directly. That is for our, our ISVs and we are going to offer infrastructure and a deployable model for the channel, but this is a channel model. Right. Um, 2020 hindsight, I think we could have done a better job of communication. We could have stepped it a little slower and we could have matured the processes, um, but it is a lot better. Yeah, um, Mike, you seem pretty charged up about this current role. I mean, you've been, it's a bit, you're a CEO of Compaq, MCI, I mean, but you seem really passionate about this, this initiative. I mean, you're having fun? You're, well, first place, you've known me a long time. Do I ever not have fun? There are a couple <laughs> WorldCom days that weren't quite as much fun as some others, but you know, these things happen. You know, banks, bankruptcy and fraud weren't the greatest yeah. technological <laughs> attributes for brand, but we kind of got through that. Uh, so I have a couple views on this. Uh, you know, what do you want to do? You want to do something that's really, this, this is really moving markets. Um, yep. It has the great benefit of having Cisco, EMC, and VMware. Could you ask for better technological partners to scale it? Uh, and you do also like to uh, work with people that you like a lot. I've known Joe and John a long time. So, you know, it, it has been relevant to the market. I love working with the kinds of young teams and the, creating the culture of a can-do. And so, yeah, sure, it's fun. Yeah, that's great. And I know you're rock and roll aficionado. Absolutely. Or, you know, and so we, we actually, we, we were down at Sapphire last week. We heard uh, Van Halen. I hadn't seen them since uh, the 80s. And uh, we're okay. <laughs> so your favorite U2 song? My favorite U2 song? I would say uh, Bloody... Sunday is my favorite YouTube yeah. song. Every once in a while, it's a beautiful day in the VC world. Yeah, so, yeah. you know. How about your, your favorite it's just too, rock song? For me, it's too cliche, I don't know. Yeah, but, it, <laughs> but it, what, do you play it? <laughs> do I play it? No. <laughs> okay. No, well, no, yeah. I don't. You play? No. Yeah. Well, I'm a hack. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Favorite rock and roll band? Uh, favorite rock and roll band? Uh, the Clash. All right. Love so, the Clash. There you yeah. go. All right. So we've concluded that. How are you? 
You know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I like just about anything, and everybody says that, but I mean, so I'm a bit of a hack on the guitar. The first song I ever learned to play on, uh, on the guitar was, was, uh, was Green Day. So, I, you know, so that was the oh, place okay. I kind of started, you know, it's, it's kind of normal. But, you know, I, I go everywhere. I mean, you know, the next one I think was Life House was the next song I learned to play. So I kind of go all over So the who's place. the entertainment uh, this week? Uh, Maroon 5 this Maroon week. Maroon 5, oh, okay. Yeah. Sting last year at Sapphire was very good. Yeah, Sting Halen, was really good. Uh, so uh, David Lee Roth was, was the lead singer, but his voice is going, so they had to crank up the guitars and you couldn't really hear it. But, all uh, right, so I, I, uh, we're, we're getting low on time. I do have one more question I want to ask <laughs> I'll you. I'll be back something beautiful here. Okay, okay, all right, well, so, come so on, back so here. we were so, on a roll. So <laughs> VCD is up to 1,000 people. Yeah. How do you maintain that kind of startup atmosphere uh, and, and keep it going as you kind of, as you said, stabilize the product line? Well, I, I think what happens is, you know, you have certain things you believe in, and it, it, you kind of, as you bring people on board, you kind of get a sense for, do those attributes work or do those attributes not work? And, uh, you know, while it's a thousand people and you continue to work on, it is very clear that this is kind of, you know, these are, you know, everybody says, well, how do you move fast? One well, of the ways you move fast is everybody we hire has a pretty strong technical orientation, so I don't have to sit here and explain what it is. So. We have, we have certain things that we look for, uh, and, and that is that you got to be passionate about this business. Just to come, you have to assume you have some amount of, you know, I'm a bit of a maverick anyway, a bit about, you know, a little, a little you know, sort of we'll take some risks on, and you have to be passionate about making a difference. And, you know, over time, you know, everybody doesn't have to look exactly the same because culture is about diversity of thought, but you do sort of get a feel. And uh, right now, you know, it's a place people want to come work. All right, Mike Capellas, the, the, to me the embodiment of strategy and execution. Uh, congratulations on the progress that you've made. I really appreciate the candid uh, conversation and uh, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks it's for really having a me, pleasure guys. to have Thank you. Thank you. All right, pleasure. everybody, keep it right there. We'll be right back with SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous coverage live from EMC World. Be right back. <laughs>